Welcome to this Monday edition of the Q&A series here on OTRS Central. If you want your questions answered in future Q&A episodes, the information on how to get your questions answered, how to submit them, is in the description box down below. Remember, it's Monday and Wednesday for Twitter, Friday for Facebook. Uh, but let's get started with this Q&A. You can check out that information as you watch and listen. At It's Johnny Russo asks, Why is Bray Wyatt ruining what could be a feud of the year candidate between Y2J and The Miz? Well, I tell you what, Johnny Russo, I wanted to see Y2J and The Miz in a short-term program to reestablish both individuals. Uh, before Y2J went over to Bray Wyatt, I thought it was a bit rushed, and I, I would have rather they waited a little bit to instead of diving right in to Bray Wyatt and Y2J. That's just me. At Tyler Ruthless, who do you see being the top five guys of the next 10 years in WWE? I don't know if I can think of the next 10 years. I could probably think of more of the next five, because 10 years is a long time away, and there probably is at least two or three guys that would be in that category that might not even be with the company at this point. Um, top five guys, I would have to go with Cena, imagine that, uh, Orton, uh, Roman, Bray Wyatt, and then, not sure about the fifth guy, honestly. At the Ben Wardy, what is your opinion on straight edge? You know, it's funny. I'll, I'll give this as in terms of reference to CM Punk. I think it's great when somebody says they don't want to drink, they don't want to do drugs, any of that stuff. Um, but maybe in the case of, like, let's say a CM Punk, maybe if he would have occasionally taken that painkiller, uh, maybe he wouldn't have been in so much pain constantly, and maybe he would still be wrestling. I don't know. Uh, straight edge, no, I think it's good. I do. You know, somebody doesn't want to do dr drugs, they don't want to drink. I say more power to them. At MC underscore Big Bird, are you a religious person? Not in the sense that I go to church, not in the sense that I sit there and espouse a bunch of Christian or Islamic or Jewish beliefs. No, I'm not. Do I believe there's a higher power? Yes, I do. Do I think that man attempts to understand something that they have no ability to comprehend? Yes, I do. Do I think books like the Bible and the Quran and the Torah are use too much as literal teachings instead of being kind of metaphoric and philosophical teachings? Yes, I do. I think any time that man tries to define something to where they understand it, they ultimately are off the mark and miss the entire point. And that's kind of how I view religion. Uh, to me, there's just too many things like in terms of paranormal or supernatural experiences that I've had myself um, that I know that other people have had. I believe there's a higher power there. But again, I think our definition of it is entirely different from what the reality actually is. At Matthew underscore Bizzle, start, aside from your glorious self, who are other wrestling talk YouTubers that deserve a look? And pre, please don't say, come on. Anyways, um, YouTubers that deserve a look other than the Schleg Daddy. Well, obviously the Schleg Daddy. And then obviously Schleg Daddy TV, my second channel here on YouTube, where I talk about things not pertaining to professional wrestling. How you like that self-promotion and plug? Uh, maybe More to Life ENT TV, In the Rope Show. I'm trying to name off some smaller channels, those that might not be as familiar to you. Um, William Smith, Anthony Ward, for their own reasons. Um, who else? Who else? You know what, maybe if I think about it, I'll put the links to a few of these channels in the description box, so that way you can go check them out. Maybe I'll do that. And New Flavor 408, should the WWE have an off-season, like three months in the summer to refresh ideas and then come back to more anticipation? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, I've always advocated the WWE should have an off-season. Um, I know some people are very strong against me in that case, but, you know... These are the same people that thought CM Punk uh, leaving was a work and that, you know, all this other stupid shit. I do think they should have an offseason. I think you do it several different ways, though. I think from a talent standpoint, you can maybe do them nine months off or on three months off or do them four months on a month off. I think it's better for all parties involved to have some form of an offseason in some way, shape, or form. Um, at Greatness DJ, do you think that once GFW gets a TV deal, if they get a TV deal, that Jeff Jarrett will eventually book himself to be the GFW world champion? By God, that wouldn't fucking surprise me. I'll put it that way. It wouldn't surprise me because right now when you go to their website, it sure seems like that federation is all about Jeff Jarrett. I'm just saying. At Kenny Kim, 
As a proud Asian, I have to ask, will WWE use Kenta right or will it be Yoshi 2.0? What's your gut say? My gut says is they won't make him Yoshi Tatsu, but I don't have a lot of confidence with him being a Japanese or Asian wrestler that he's going to be booked as a big time star. I do not. I hope I'm wrong, but my gut suggests otherwise. At the 420, Goonie wants to know if WWE had a Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 19, who are the few of the names you'd have put in it, and who would you have win it? Um, Let's see, back at that time, WrestleMania 19, you'd have had to throw Benoit in there, Eddie Guerrero in there. Um, Was Edge out at the time with injury? I'm trying to remember. Um... Maybe I would have thrown Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho in there. Who would I have had won it uh, either at that time, either Benoit or Guerrero? Those would be the two that stand out to me the most, and by God, at that time, it most definitely would have worked. I guess you could have thrown guys like Kane in there and RVD in there. Those would be some other names you could have associated with that event. Um, at Curic Rustling, who is more painful on commentary, Taz or Jerry Lawler? You know, Taz occasionally has those redeeming qualities just because he's so bad that it crosses over to being entertaining. More painful in commentary to me is easily Jerry Lawler because we know what Lawler can do. We know what Lawler is capable of. We know what Lawler once used to be on commentary. And then we see the sad, pathetic, John Cena cocksucking version of Jerry Lawler that we get today who seems to be just content on coasting by and towing the company line, and it sucks. So Jerry Lawler is much more painful on commentary. And Mr. B to late 90, when do you think it would be the ideal time for Seth Rollins to cash in Money in the Bank? Um, at Money in the Bank. Otherwise, it might not be till after WrestleMania. At Grand IJ, if Bo Dallas won the Battle Royal for the IC title, how would you book his reign? Similar to how he's being booked now. He keeps winning matches, and he finds a way to win matches. He's not afraid of anybody. He doesn't necessarily cheat, but he finds a lot of accidental ways to win. I'd do a lot of the same things they're doing with him right now and then just keep pounding away at this kid. At the underscore 420 underscore blazer, might like to smoke a little weed and gonzo. Where would Chris Benoit be in today's WWE? He probably wouldn't. I mean, because he'd been in his mid-40s by this point in time, I'd have to think he would have stepped aside by, by now. I would think anyways. At Dexter C 73 are WWE house shows a waste of money? No, I don't think they're a waste of money. If you're going there and you should know better, expecting to see a bunch of title changes and a bunch of dramatic shit happen, uh, then you're a tool anyways. Uh, if you're going there because you like to see matches that are worked for the live crowd and not for the television audience first, then I think the house shows are the way to go. If you're a fan of the in-ring product and the aspects of storytelling, then if anything, the house shows are more worth your money than going to a television taping. At BW Rosas, what are your thoughts on the backstage power struggle between Kevin Dunn and Triple H? And who do you think will win in the end? It doesn't surprise me that Kevin Dunn would be sitting there trying to sabotage somebody else to protect himself and his spot. Because that seems to be the, the modus operandi of the higher execs in WWE and the company as a whole. I think eventually Triple H will win just because he'll outlast Kevin Dunn, but that could be years before that happens. And I do think at this point, frankly, and I have thought for a long period of time, that Kevin Dunn is a cancer to the WWE, and that the day they inject themselves with the radiation and chemotherapy necessary to eliminate themselves as the Kevin Dunn cancer, everybody involved with that company wins. That's the wrestlers, that's the executives, that's the creative team, and that's us as fans. Uh, at Eric Alex Sandberg, with the signing of Kenta, could you see him having a feud with Kevin Steen? Um, yeah, I don't know what they would do with Kenta, and I'm not sure what they're going to do with Kevin Steen. That'd be interesting. Could I see that maybe be a feud down at NXT? Maybe use it as a trial run to see if it will work at the big show, which is what they should be doing. Uh, then, yeah, maybe they could. You never know, I suppose. At Ray H D Designs. Yeah, Ray H Designs. Easy for me to say, brother. Do you think Zack Ryder faded because creative ran out of ideas, or was he squashed because of his YouTube videos? Um, I always said that I thought Zack Ryder did the YouTube videos because of the prodding of the WWE I always felt that that was them testing out social media and he was kind of their guinea pig. I think he was squashed because he had that one week 
when he was the U.S. champion where was it was it U.S. or yeah it was U.S. champion and the ratings weren't all that good and it was a shitty segment so of course they blamed Zack Ryder then they knocked the belt off of him and then they knocked him into Tim Buck fucking two. Um, you know, maybe it's one of those things where Zack Ryder isn't pushing that hard because he's just got his job and that's it and he doesn't really want to rock the boat. I don't know, but um, obviously he faded badly and maybe creative ran out of ideas. Maybe it was because they were never designed to try and get him over. He was there as a guinea pig to test out something. At Good Guy Vic, do you think WWE is homophobic as well as racist? Their gay wrestlers are always weirdos. Um... A bit homophobic, yes. I would say more racist than homophobic, but there's definitely some homophobia there. No question. At SA Wrestling Blog, if Brian wasn't injured, do you think he'd be facing Lesnar at SummerSlam for the belt, or would he have lost it before that? There's a possibility he would have lost it before that, but I think he ultimately would have carried it to SummerSlam, and Vince and the rest of the people in the company would have gotten their rocks off to him having to do the honors to Lesnar at SummerSlam, I promise you. At Best Buy Rick 1, who do you think did the most roids during their lifetime, Ultimate Warrior or Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner? Oh, good Christ. I'll go Big Papa Pump. Hello, if you hear me! <laughs> at CFC Hut. Will you ever make a video on your opinion of 9-11? Yes, I have, and I'll probably do another one next year, come closer to, or this year, come closer to 9-11. Uh, go to youtube.com slash TV, and you'll eventually find that video on that channel. But I talk about the truth about 9-11. At Blockbuster, Alex finishes out this Q&A. If you could time travel one time, would you travel to the past or to the future? Um... I would travel to the past. I'd probably go back to my senior year of high school. There are a lot of things on several different levels that I would like to be able to do differently. You can't live your life with regrets and you can't let the shit eat away at you. But if I had the opportunity and you know it didn't really fuck up things going forward, I'd like to go back to maybe my senior year of high school, especially from an athletic standpoint, and change some things. But, you know, it is what it is. Can't go back and change the past. You learn from it, and you move on. Anyway, thanks to all of you that submitted your questions for this Q&A. Got a lot more questions in this time, in a decent amount of time. So, again, you'll be seeing Q&As again Wednesday and Friday here on OTRS Central. Make sure you check out some of the other great content available on this channel all weekend, all month long.